so let's start with tension pneumothorax, which is arguably the most prevalent and dangerous of the pulmonary life threats. What causes a tension pneumothorax? In a nutshell, air entering the pleural cavity causes a pneumothorax. This frequently occurs in trauma due to lung injury that is sustained directly. In other words, if you have a chest wound from a stabbing, the lung is penetrated. In the pleural space, air escapes from the lung parenchyma. A pneumothorax is frequently the result of rib fractures penetrating the lung in blunt trauma cases. A tension pneumothorax is a form of pneumothorax that happens when the pleural space has a one-way valve effect. Accordingly, the patient draws more air into the pleural space with each and every breath, leading to a significant high-pressure air collection. So what are the complications of this? 1. The patient will nearly always be hypoxic because the tension pneumothorax will initially compress the lung on the affected side, before shifting the mediastinum to the contralateral side and causing compression there as well. As a result of the lungs being mechanically constricted and unable to function correctly, you experience substantial hypoxia. You also get impaired cardiac filling. So direct compression of the mediastinum from the huge air collection is going to compress the heart and prevent the heart from filling normally. Finally, reduced venous return occurs. Therefore, in healthy physiology, negative intrathoracic pressure causes blood to return from the periphery into the central circulation. You may anticipate that your intrathoracic pressure would be positive if you had a significant amount of high-pressure air in your chest, because there is no longer a pressure gradient to drive blood from the periphery back to the heart. Your cardiac output and filling will both be significantly compromised. For this reason, we want to listen for unilaterally absent breath sounds when trying to diagnose a tension pneumothorax. This is why the first step of our primary survey for breathing is bilateral auscultation of the lungs. If breath sounds are absent on one side, you should strongly suspect a tension pneumothorax. We also want to look for evidence of respiratory distress. Our patients with pneumothoraces are often working very hard to breathe because their chest is already hyper expanded with this big air collection. So they have to work hard to pull air into that overinflated chest and they'll have clinical distress on exam. They're almost invariably gonna be tachypnic for the same reason. We already talked about why they would become hypoxic and then, as you can imagine, the trachea is gonna be deviated away from the lesion because this big expanding air collection is gonna push everything off to the other side. So an important thing to remember about tension pneumothorax is it doesn't just affect the lung. In addition to respiratory impairment, our patients are going to have shock. So I already mentioned that you have impaired venous return. You have mechanical compression of the heart. This is going to prevent normal cardiac output from taking place. So these patients are going to be tachycardic. They may be hypotensive, and tension pneumothorax represents a form of obstructive shock. So we want to look not only for evidence of pulmonary compromise, but also for evidence of circulatory compromise in our patients with tension pneumothorax. Now, tension pneumothorax is not usually a radiologic diagnosis. Usually, this is something we diagnose clinically, but if you do happen to get an x-ray, there are some characteristic findings that you're gonna expect to see. On this image, we have lines outlining the separation of the lung from the pleural space. Now, this patient must have some underlying lung pathology because you can actually see that the lung tissue is tethered to the pleura, in one location. Maybe he has some old scarring in that region from a prior injury, hard to know. But he's got two regions of air where you don't see any lung markings, and those are denoted here and here. So you can see the line demarcating the lung tissue from empty airspace, and you can actually see inside of the air collections, that there aren't any lung markings. You also see inferior displacement of the diaphragm. So on the patient's right-hand side, I've outlined the normal contour of the diagram, and on the left-hand side, you can see it's pushed down much lower, and that's because this high-pressure air collection is taking up a lot of room in the chest, and actually displacing it inferiorly, and for the same reason, it's displacing the mediastinum, which is normally a left-sided structure, into the middle or right-hand side of the chest. Now, you don't want to get this x-ray. Tension pneumothorax is a clinical diagnosis. Getting an x-ray of a patient with a suspected tension pneumo is only going to delay your treatment for the patient and it's not necessary. So what are we going to do to treat a tension pneumothorax? 
Very simply, the first line of treatment is needle decompression, and what we're doing when we decompress the lung is allowing air to get out of the pleural space. So if you have got a big high pressure air collection here in your chest, the goal of decompressing is to make a conduct between the inside of your chest and the outside world that'll let that air escape. And what's gonna happen, is that's gonna equilibrate the pressure inside of your pleural space with the atmospheric pressure. However, it's not gonna make your pneumothorax go away, it's not gonna actually restore negative pleural pressure, you are still gonna need a chest tube, but it's going to decompress the large air collection that is mechanically interfering with your cardiac function, and your pulmonary function and it's gonna improve the clinical status of the patient very rapidly. To learn these procedures, both the needle decompression and chest tube insertion, please watch the next video. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and support us to learn more, thank you.